Hold your breath, guys. I'm going to do something incredibly insane. Do you see all these glorious capital ships? Now at the bottom of the English Channel. I bet you thought that was pretty dumb, right? Hey! I am Feedback Gaming, and this is Hearts of Iron 4. It's been a while since I've shown an incredibly broken exploit. So, I think it's about time we show you one, right? Right? You like exploits? Like this video. We'll see more in the future if that's the case. Single player, new game, 1936. The United Kingdom rule Britannia. That's right. I live in the United Kingdom. Yes, yes, I do drink tea sometimes. And yes, I do know the Queen, as is requirement of every British person. And today, we play on historical, on regular, and off we go. Do you know what grinds my gears? Those pesky colonists that broke away. How about we do a recolonization of the United States, eh? That sounds like a plan, right? Right? Good. First of all, select all the divisions, control left click on unassigned divisions, and we'll make them all these rubbish colonial garrison troops. And we'll put them on the border uh, here. There we go. Regarding equipment, we're just going to make an absolute crap ton of guns. Everything on guns, apart from one on artillery and one for support equipment. And delete the rest. Regarding the ships, yeah, delete the rest. We'll make a brand new fleet. And we'll just make some convoys for today. Good. Regarding the fleet, we're going to shift left click. All the command groups, right click them, pop them into reserve, and G to merge them, we'll move them all to Portsmouth. Off they go. Regarding research, we'll go for machine tools, construction, jumpstart that industry, and we'll also go for mobile warfare for a change, and also start to work on artillery. We'll max out the factories for mills in London, and the rest will be civvies there. There we go, that's what I want. Regarding the national focus, we're not going to pick one. Because when you don't select a national focus, you get double the political power per day. And trust me, we need political power. We need a lot of it. Quick. Regarding the air wings, uh, we just select them. Now move them back to the UK. Here. Shift left click onto pilot exercise and get them to level 3. Alright, time for the exploit. In the Man the Guns expansion, they added a new thing. The London Naval Treaties. When you make ships, you have to make them below a certain tonnage. And if you're part of the tree, you just can't make them. So, for instance, if I was to make a brand new ship, this one, as you can see, it is larger than 10,000 production costs. So, I just can't build this. It is part of the London Naval Treaty. I bet you didn't even know this even existed. That's how much of an impact it actually makes on the game. But, there is a way we can cheese it right now to make it super spicy. Because Britain is the creator of the London Naval Treaty, yeah, London, yeah, oof, who would have guessed that, right? We dictate what's the largest ship could be. What if we deleted all of our capital ships? So we dictated that the largest ship would be incredibly small. So wait for all those ships to merge, go five speed, boom, 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 add them all up. We need to wait for every single ship, there we go. Then we're going to break off all the carriers, then we'll break off all the battleships. Then we'll break off all, apart from the hood, then all the heavy cruisers too. There we go. Hold your breath, guys. I'm going to do something incredibly insane. Do you see all these glorious capital ships? Now at the bottom of the English Channel. I bet you thought that was pretty dumb, right? So now, if we go into London Naval Treaties after we wait a few days, aha, here we go. So we re-invite people back into London Naval Treaty, but now the requirement is significantly lower. But we don't want to invite them. We want to send a warning to tell these boys they've been very naughty and they've gone over the London Naval Treaty, even though the threshold only changed in the last few days. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, right? So we need 50 political power to send them a warning. And there we go. So the first warning we are going to send to Chile. Boom. Send warning. So what we're saying to Chile is you've been very naughty. You've gone over the London Naval Treaty, even though we've just changed the requirements over the last two days. Can you please disarm? And they've chosen they are going to disarm. Damn, that's not what we wanted. We're going to wait for another 50 political power and send a warning to someone else. There is a random chance they can rearm and agree to the new terms, or they can say no, and then guess what? You get a free war goal. I know, right? Next one we're going to send a warning to is Brazil. And what did Brazil say? They reject. Ooh. And here you go. We now have a war goal against Brazil, and we are going to take it. That war goal will now last until the 20th February 1938. We have two years to make our move. So you're probably thinking, annexing Brazil, that's not a big deal. It's just Brazil. Sure, they're the biggest power in South America. Sure, they've got a handful of factories. Sure, they've got a decent amount of rubber. But what's this? They are guaranteed by the United States of America. Oh boy. And what is significant about the United States at the very start of the game? Oh yeah, that's right. They have basically no divisions. 
Hmm. So let's make a few divisions of our own. Just a handful. We'll also change our occupation law. We'll put it on, let's say, no garrison, which will give us all the guns back. Japan has declared war on Chile. So this is one of the random things that happen in this game. So because the London Naval Tree has changed, Japan's declared war on Chile. Uh... I'm not sure why they have a war goal on them. Technically, I dictate the rules of the London Naval Treaty, but yeah, prepare for chaos anyway. This is going to be like an unhistorical game, but unhistorical. So now we've got all the guns that were garrisons now been added to our pool for all the new troops that are currently training. And now we go back to garrison because we do want a garrison and we're going to go on local autonomy. There we go. All right, split off the army into two. We'll give them generals. He will do. He will do. Field Marshal, of course, Montgomery for his logistics wizardry. Pop him under here, front line from here to here, pop you here. We can exercise these to level three, now we're waiting, we just need to deploy these divisions. We are practically just ready to declare war anyway, so we'll drop these boys down. Boom, drop them here, split in half. Slightly over the limit, but you know what, I can deal with that. Wait for them to arrive back, and then we execute the next part of our plan. So now we can select focuses now, so we'll go for reinforce the empire. All right, we're all in position, stop exercising. Get on the front line. Three, two, one. Declare on Brazil. Activate the order. Go aggressive. Off you go. And of course, we're going to bring in Canada into the war. The British American War. Yeah. Is that the right war? Yeah, it is. Okay. I had to think about that. So, the secret to this war, you probably heard me say this a thousand times on a thousand of my videos, is not to actually fight them on the front line, but it is just to walk by them on the front line. Just go for a general stroll through the front line and walk around them. Attach all of the air wings, close air support, as well as air superiority. Pop them onto our army and just let the AI take care of it. I can't be messing around with stuff like that. And we have the ability to split right down the middle. The famous state of New England has been split in half. Oh, everyone loves the New England state. How do you make an American salty about Hoi 4? You talk about the state of New England. <laughs> and there we go. Slice down the middle and we work on production. We'll go for concentrated industry because we're uh, blitzkrieging them at record speed. As you can see, we're pinning them in. We're not actually winning these battles. As you can see, most of them are all red, but the truth behind it is we're pushing in. We're doing quite well. For some reason, we're involved in this peace conference with Ethiopia and Italy. Okay. Okay, we now actually have a puppet focus against Chile. Why? I don't know. They said that they were going to join the London Naval Tree, but we have a war goal against them. So just be aware if you send a warning, you, you might get the war goal. There you go. Anyway, war propaganda against the United States. Okay, another little pro tip for you is if they're not on the front line, press H to put them in place. Hold control, press H, and then they will run to the front line. Look how quickly they move forward. Oh, lightning speed. So the secret here to do is just not let them naturally push forward. Try and make like little forks like this. See this fork here and here? And then you can encircle these divisions quite naturally as you push forward. And there we go. Encirclement of two divisions. Remember, they only start with like 30-ish divisions. So the honest truth is just encircling a handful of divisions will make a massive difference in the long run. And then one in Buffalo now. And he has been encircled. Oh no, what a shame. And there's a breakout in the north too. It's pretty much over. This is how weak the United States is at the start of the game, guys. That's why you have to take advantage of them there and then. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to research military police. Because we're going to have to be suppressing quite a lot of territory. And I want to make sure I've got enough guns for that. So don't forget, you are still at war with Brazil. Oh, we've got the abdication crisis. Okay, we'll just abdicate. I guess we're not going non-aligned, guys. I love that Canada wanted control of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Why? I don't know. Next focus we're going to go for a service overseas. We've got mobile warfare now, so we can go for construction too. You see, we're just moving by, pushing further forward. All the divisions are gathered in the Midwest. Is that the Midwest? God damn, I'm getting my American geography down here, boys. I like the Midwest here and then the uh, Middle East here. <laughs> Once again, lots of gaps in the front line here, making sure I go around them. Don't fight them head on. Come on, guys. We all know this. We've played the game at least two times. We know that in Hearts of Iron 4, you go for the encirclement like that. Oh, how beautiful is that? So glorious. America now has 10 to 30 divisions. So you're probably wondering, why didn't you defend this northern front line? Because that means that America will probably put divisions on this front line and I'll not even care. Oh, no. A Canadian division has been encircled. I don't care. So once again, just keep going control B. See these guys are all just walking, control B, and now they're all railroading. The quicker you get them on the front line, the quicker they keep pushing into enemy territory. As you can see, even though there's only one division on this front line, for this entire front line, there's just one. And I'm just going to take advantage of that. And he's encircled. Rip. After service overseas, we go for Mediterranean Bastion. See they're all gathering now in the north region. Encircled Chicago with four divisions. 
Keep going, keep going, and keep going. All right, how many visions they got? We definitely got four here getting encircled. Uh, eight to 24. They're all on the front line of Canada. Not that it actually matters. Oh, three of them got encircled. It's very important that we handle the garrisons and they're becoming a massive problem right now. So that's something we're gonna have to keep a close eye on. Oh, East Coast. And we have Brazil. That's a good thing because that means there's three divisions we get to encircle. That means when we land into Brazil, we don't have to deal with as many divisions. Always helpful. Oh, wow. Gee, thanks, Brazil. You've literally just lost your port. All right, these 10 divisions on the back, they're gonna plan a naval invasion to uh this part of brazil so at the moment the united states is the only major power and i think philippines has been knocked out yeah they have by japan which is slightly annoying because that means japan's gonna get some of this peace deal oh well not the end of the world okay let's make a new division uh duplicate uh artillery and artillery artillery and a single division that'll do and this will be these guys that are about to do the naval invasion on brazil give them a different icon good all right, now we are going to protect the Suez. All right, we've got military police, and then we go for, I guess, some gun upgrades, I guess. And then our MP will be our horses. So we'll make sure that's the one assigned. It isn't. That makes me upset. And then we work on the better guns. Yeah, we're working on that now. Good. East Coast. What's this? More Brazilians. Go here. The United States has been annexed. Oh my goodness, I didn't think they'd take them that quickly. I was hoping to knock out Brazil first. There's still time. Okay, first thing I'd like to do is just cover the coastline. Grab all of that. Grab Texas, Florida. This is a crucial part of the strategy because you need to be able to block off Japan. You have got the majority of the contribution. We just need to make sure they don't get any more. So do that. Then we grab New York. Uh, they grab Hawaii and a bunch of islands. Okay, fair enough. And I suppose at this point, I just eat up the rest, right? There's a very small chance that Japan might puppet, so don't let them do that. Because they have just puppeted the Philippines. Now, I personally don't care, but there's going to be people in the comments screeching, Why didn't you puppet them, Dave? You don't have a navy. You could have got a full navy off the United States. Eh. I don't care. France has declared war in Chile. We're reaching that 50% world tension threshold where they start to join other factions. Now, that is a major concern. We need to try and avoid that for as long as possible. These Brazilian divisions are just literally floating. And there we go. And now the 10 divisions go here and do your naval invasion. We'll grab our submarines, break them off, escort all the areas we're going to do the naval invasion and give it a, an admiral. We don't need that many divisions anymore. So this army group can be deleted and we'll make a nice even 24 army group for this guy. Biggest concern we've got right now is resistance. And that is going to eat a lot of guns if we're not careful. They've so got local autonomy, which helps increase compliance. We need 200,000 BAM power just to keep the resistance down. And that's 20,000 guns. Oof. We need to produce more support equipment and we need to produce more artillery. New Zealand would like to send us some guns. Thank you, New Zealand. All right, so it's crucial that we knock out Brazil right now because there's a very high chance that they'll join a faction. Probably the Chinese United Front or the Japanese faction. So let's take care of that now. War propaganda against Japan. Sure. Wait for the org to regain. Three, two, one. Off you go. How many divisions has Brazil got? One to five? That can't be right. I guess I encircled most of their divisions then. This is going to be a walk in the park. Easy. What we're going to do now is going to recruit and deploy and prioritize all equipment for garrisons. We need to get those garrisons to 100% strength to be gaining compliance. You do not gain compliance as quickly if you do not have full garrison support on all your areas that you occupy that aren't cores. Might as well exercise our entire fleet. We've got so much oil, we don't even know what to do with it now. Next focus we're gonna go for is the Balkan strategy. These are focuses you've probably never even seen anyone go for before. I know, I know. Hey, nice encirclement. And as soon as we've got mobile warfare, why not go for this guy as well? Army Maneuver Genius. I bet you'd even know this guy existed, right? So this makes the speed of this division 4.2 kilometers per hour, where the normal speed is four. All right, the Chinese United Front has just formed, and luckily, I've annexed the entirety of Brazil. There you go. G, G. Portugal seeks to purchase British ships. Sure. Oh, look at that, boys. Look at that. The United Kingdom in 1937. <laughs> to illustrate the size of my growth, look at the compliance. Or maybe the resistance is better. Oh, there we go, the resistance. That really shows off the colors that we occupy. Beautiful. All right, we've got partial mobilization now, and we can pump out a bunch of civvies. At this point, guys, it's really down to you how you want to play the game. Now, I'm just going to pretty much dick about and see how much land I can conquer as democratic Britain. Yeah, that's right, guys. We are democratic right now. Don't forget that. So what I've got now is a war goal on Chile. So what I could do 
We'll get some fatter divisions. Let's make a single division and then convert them over when we get 24. Good. A few civvies that are broken and the factories that are broken, ship those to the top. Take care of those immediately. Oh, look at the power of our industry right now. Oof. Plan B. Naval invasion. Chile. Here's a nice little bug. I guess this is an exploit as well. Uh, if they're moving overseas, the speed is 12 kilometers per hour. It's still fast, faster than traveling on land. But if you control B here, they'll somehow railroad over C. How does that even work? I don't know. Do they install railway lines on the ocean? I don't know. Figure that one out. Comment below. Be aware that right now they're in the Chinese United Front. We're going to be having a little war versus China. Oh, single battleship. Can we get enough range? Yes, we can. And off you go. Just to wait for the preparation to complete. Uh, we'll send only half. And they're off. These divisions are insanely strong, so when I land, I should be able to just push them out of the way. And Chile will collapse. I say that, and I land, and uh, they're holding out pretty well. Give a bit of firepower, infantry expert. We can go organization first, too. And we broke their capital, and get out of the way. There we go. 92% towards capitulation. Send all the other divisions over. All the ones I've left at home. Boom. Go here, and the rest. Go northwards. Off you go. It's always amusing when the AI does this. Back and forth, back and forth. Oh, an overrun. Oh, okay. Now we'll go down the boring path of limited rearmament. Seems a strange thing to say, rearmament, whilst I've been at war like three times. Rip. All right, let's move these divisions over now to China. Well, in this case, British Malaysia. And we'll make a naval invasion order from here and to the south. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we've got so many civilian factories. Okay, I guess we can make military factories now. Seems we've got so many factories coming from America. Do some old-fashioned war propaganda against Italy. Confusing, because we're not even at war with them. 24 divisions are all good to go. We can always drop those into China when we're ready. Boop. Okay, we select a general. Go for you. Harsh leader. Oof. And we'll exercise you to level 3 as well. One concern we're going to run into is lack of supply. So we'll go for logistics companies, and we're going to have to get a single motorized to take care of motorized issues. All right, let's take care of my dudes. So let's go for infantry expert, let's go for army logistics, and let's go for regrouping. when well, we've got the political power anyway. Oh no, supply problems. Uh, you go here, then the rest goes here. These divisions stop exercising, get into position, get the org up. And when you're ready, boys, three, two, one, off you go. For some bizarre reason, only two divisions have been deployed. I don't know why. Can we send them back? 10 divisions have definitely been assigned, right? Yeah, 10 divisions. And off you go. And two's only gone again. I have no idea why. Anyway, if we land and take the port. Oh, it's because France has taken some of the land. Right, okay. Well, in that case, we might as well get France into this war then, I guess. They want to join the faction. Let them join the faction. Welcome to Allies, Naval Invasion, Low Supply Issues. Yay. Oh, no. China is literally getting bullied. Allies and Japan against them. And slap on logistics. And we need motorized. Start working a little bit on anti-air too. Extra divisions that we've got at home. Bring them to China and then we can wrap up China nice and quickly. Not going to work on encirclements now. I'm just going to bump my head against the front line over and over again to get war participation. We need to get that a lot, 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 lot higher. 21% will not do. Give up the Azores to Britain. You know what? Azores for free. Lease? How about permanent? Do you know what I fancy? Submarines. The worst submarines ever. Pump them out in numbers. Japan in the north, making some decent gains here. Made a nice breakthrough in the center. Uh, in the south, oof. Uh, slap on some anti-air and some reconnaissance. We've got so many civilian factories right now. Oh my god, I don't even know what to do with them. So one thing we can do with them is just dump them into MI5. Oh, in this case, MI6. Well, one better, eh? Fortify East Asia. I've run out of manpower. Let's go for limited conscription. Meanwhile, compliance is getting mighty high practically everywhere. My contribution is 53%. That's what I want to see. My initial plan was to rush down this focus tree and just go to war with Italy and eat them up. But they'll probably just join the Axis and then we'll be at war with Germany anyway. So there's a war with Germany regardless. China is on a knife's edge, 97%. Grab that city and rip. Okay, what we're going to do here? I'm going to grab this. Cut off the coastline. Oh my god, I have very few victory points. I'm not even sure how much I can even do. Done. We took the southern half of China, the best part of China. All back in Europe. 
Exercise to level three, make sure they're all my artillery divisions. Assign the generals. All the ones with the best attack, obviously. The Singapore strategy. I don't think I've ever selected this focus ever before. Okay, I think I've made one too many army groups. I've really eaten into my manpower, and I had a lot of manpower. I can't continue until I get rid of the war to end all wars soon. So I just realized that going down this path to go for war against Japan is kind of a waste of time. Because you think about it, they're going to end up justifying on me for Malaysia anyway at some point. Because historical's turned on. So in this case, I'll go down for this one. I want to go for these focuses. The ones I've probably never selected in my entire life. Which makes Turkey go democratic and Spain go democratic. Spice. Spice. Everywhere. Alright, let's put my armies on the front line. Go... Delete all the orders, and front line, go, go, go. Supply problems. Oh, just under 61 of 68. Good. And we'll also push Turkey towards democracy. Done to go war. Okay, let's stop exercising. Put everyone on aggressive, and then go, go, go when available. I'll see if they declare and see what happens. I'm really curious about this, because I'm just going to try and bash through the east wall immediately. Poland refuses the German ultimatum. Are they going to put troops on the border? Oh, they let me to walk in. Oh my god, this is going to be so broken if they just let me walk in. Ah, oh, they put troops on the front line. Smart. Very smart AI. And they're even choosing not to declare war immediately. They're delaying Danzig or war. I've never seen this before. The Germans have declared war on the Netherlands. So they just ignored Poland and just gone for the Dutch. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, okay. And they've gone for Belgium. I guess I just invite them, right? And then I just grab all my troops and then just put them on the front line of Belgium and the Netherlands. Yeah, go there, boys. Call to arms for everyone, and off we go. Lend leases from everyone. The lend lease in me planes. Interesting, that's new. Fully deciphered the Germans, full spy network inside of them. Not looking good. Did we just go? Off we go. Oh my damn. And we're actually breaking them. Insane. Oh my goodness, encirclement. Brutal. Encirclement of his best medium tanks. Rommel's panzers have been encircled. F. Alright, second wave. Off you go. Need manpower. Extensive conscription. But the Germans are thinking right now, like, how are the British so unbelievably strong? Oh, rip! <laughs> rip! The occupation of Tanginia. We get an option to declare war on them. 200 political power. Yeah, sure, why not? Drop an extra army off just to clean up Libya and any other mess that's going on around the world. Uh, the ability to declare war on Mexico. You know, I'll take that. Every possible opportunity to declare war, even though I'm democratic, I'm going to take it. Oof. All de -orged. Those divisions are mine now. Oh my goodness. Rip. Next wave. Go. Lack of air power is really hurting us. So let's go for some hurricanes. Then we can rush for Spitfire. Uh, which is Air Rearmament Fighter Command. Siege of Tobruk. Instead of being held by Australians, it is held by Italians. Well, not anymore, anyway. All right, update. Libya's taken. Push back into Egypt. Series 3 taken again. Pushing them down into Africa. It's the Italians. I made a push out again. The Italians are pretty strong. Oh, it looks like the divisions have taken a beating, though. Very low strength, a lot of those divisions. Germany, on the other hand, is holding firm. Doing a really good job at it, by the looks of things. And the reason why is their air support is very, very good. So we need to get some planes in there and then we can take care of them. Start working on non Spitfires as well as the more advanced Spitefuls. Then we'll also make them cheaper so we can produce way more. We can reduce the British Raj from a colony down to a puppet. Okay. All right. Let's go for the continuous focus of air production. And now we can produce 9.9. 10 fighter twos a day. That's pretty good. We've got lots of air XP twos. So we go for the range and the engine. Chamberlain passes away. F. Lord Halifax becomes the leader of the party. Sure. <laughs> Who's this guy? No idea. Training up some fire wings here. 200s. I'm going to get them all to level 3 and then we'll deploy all of them. Finally, send them into battle. Off you go, boys. And there they go. Deployed. Hopefully with some air control now, we might have more of an impact. Japan going for the focus. Secure the Philippines. You own the Philippines. Why? Oh man, air power makes all the difference. I should have made planes a lot early on. Oh well, mistakes were made. My contribution is 63%. Damn right. Oh my goodness. Italy. Oof. Big oof. One moment Britain had basically 50 planes. And uh, now we have thousands. These 20 divisions are going to go here into Japan. Why? Oh look. Strike the southern resource area. Yeah, don't declare on me. 
that would be a big mistake. But the AI will do it anyway. Pretty much those are all the options you've got for invading the UK as democratic. You've also got invade Ireland, but you need to have Norway and France to capitulate. And I didn't want to have to recapture France and Norway. Don't want to be messing with that. So that's another option for you. And there goes the Axis. Gone. All right, what do we do? Do we do the same thing again? I don't think we can take that much, though. <laughs> oh, the puppet of Germany. Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, well. See, this is why you guys constantly go on about player-led priest conferences, right? A thing of beauty. Japan has declared on British Malaya. Surprise, surprise. All right, convoy raid. All of this. Split them off. Add a admiral. And we've got a naval invasion here. Off you go. Make me proud. And a very clean naval invasion. What I like to see. Are all the Japanese divisions in China? Because uh, there's not a lot going on the mainland. Too little, too late, Japan. RIP! And most of it goes to China? Oh, I guess French China did something, I guess? That's what I like to see. The whole of the Japanese mainland. Oh, the Manchu Republic is French. Meng Zheng is also French. So one thing you could have also done is you could have sent a warning to the Soviet Union and that could have possibly, flip a coin, give you a war justification against them. But the problem is, is landing into the Soviet Union. Kind of where are you going to land from? The only suitable location is landing in Siberia from your eastern holdings. But even then, that's a bit of a grind. And the Soviet Union starts off with one of the biggest armies in the game. So probably not the best choice. Where the United States, on the other hand, is ripe for the pickings. Hence why I went for them. Austria votes to join Germany. Okay. Or what's left of Germany. The climax. Hold an imperial conference. Remember, don't forget this. Democratic Britain. Alright, imperial conference of 1942. I need to up relations with everyone. Canada, South Africa, India. Aussies, New Zealand. I don't even know if I need it for Malaya, but I'll do it anyway. Begin the conference. Discuss defense. And you always go for the bottom one every single time. Blah, 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 blah. They all say yes, lose political power. Discuss trade. Bomb option. Quit India movement. It's a bit late for that. Blah, 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 blah. Discuss the economy. Discuss appeasement. And finally, discuss the Imperial Conference. Bottom option. And Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, India. All except. Boom. Uh, now we're going to go for... Suppress subjects, continuous focus. I have to wait for everyone to lose their autonomy. Uh, I can do that a lot quicker by sending convoys and guns. I was boosting democracy in Spain. It doesn't look like I can get them over 60%. And all my spies are in prison. Oops. Watch this single spy release every single one from prison. Amazing. Okay. Colony, colony. I can annex Malaya. Uh, we'll hold off on that. And India and South Africa, the ones behind. 10,000 guns for you, 10,000 guns for you. We've reduced everyone down to an integrated puppet, every single one. How did we do that? We built lots of civilian factories and infrastructure inside of the areas that were colonial states. And then we did the emergency lend lease of uh, guns and then also an absolute crap ton of convoys. Oh, and also we also went for suppressed subjects, which slowly and truly ticks down their autonomy. Anyway, the last one now, Imperial Federation. The Imperial Federation has long been toted as an alternative to self-governance. After a lengthy period of preparations, the time has now at last come to unify our government with those of our dominions and to retake our position as the world's predominant superpower. And boom, Imperial Federation, Democratic Britain as Lord Edward Halifax, the Prime Minister. Wow. A lot of this is cord now, so I don't even have to control it. Canada's cord, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand is all cord. Unfortunately, India and Malaysia does not get cord. Boo, but there you go, guys. Look at that. So let's not forget, this is very important. You pay attention to this. I conquered all of this as democratic Britain. And at the very end, the Soviet Union has declared war on us. So what you could do is defeat the Soviet Union and take all of Siberia. And that would make a very big font. Guys, did you enjoy this video? Do you like glitches? Do you like exploits? Tell me in the comments. Like, subscribe. I hope... You have an awesome day, and I'll see you guys next time. See you soon. Bye-bye. Currently, guys, ad revenue has tanked. The lockdown has totally frozen the YouTube economy. If you want to help me out, the best thing you can do in these dire times is become a patron. The link is in the description below. Thank you, boys and girls. Bye-bye.